guys back to another episode of Lattes with Lindsay. I am so honored and happy to have my next guest on who is Raj Sapaya. He's a co-founder of Foundation Physio and he's going to open our eyes to the opportunities that he's had within his career and how he truly excited, like excelled almost as an entrepreneur. So what's up? How you doing? What's up, Lindsay? Long time. How's it going? Nice to see you yes. again. Yes. And we were just having this chat before I went on live that we, you know, haven't seen each other in so long, but you have grown like crazy <laughs> since the last time I've seen same, you. So. Same with you. Same with you. I'm glad that I'm glad you're able to use your platform to bring these messages out. So appreciate it. Yes. Yes. And honestly, entrepreneurship is, is something that is so dear to my heart because when I have connections and opportunities to talk to other entrepreneurs, I'm like, holy cow, you have taken it like up a notch and, and it almost motivates others to also push themselves to it. So why don't you tell us about your story? You know, like how did you start as a, a physio and, and what, you know, made you want to do it? Like what, what was it's, the process? It's, it's so hard to talk about yourself uh, because it's just kind of <laughs> like life, you know, for me, it's not like, I don't think I did anything different. I just worked because I just work. Like that's what I like to do. But uh, you know, like I became a, I became a physio. Um, I always wanted to, I know, you know, growing up, you, you kind of think, what, what do you want to be when you grow up? Right. So for me, I knew I always wanted to make some sort of difference. It was always, that was always something in my life. Like I wanted to impact people somehow, how it, how it was going to do it. I didn't know that probably didn't shape till I was in university. Right. But I always knew I wanted to work with people. I was driven by people. I was driven being around people. It was something, I guess my parents inspired in me. So, um, you know, then I had exposure to obviously healthcare jobs and, when I was in university or grad. So I ended up like going into like my health science degree because um, I knew like health was a good way to impact people. Um, and you know, when we all go into healthcare, we don't really know the true way that healthcare is actually practiced because we understand that when we're all want to be practitioners because we meet physio students, RMT students, medical students all the time. It's this passion yes. to give and it's this passion to learn. But when we get out, we really there is it's a system that's not built towards those things, right? Mm -hmm. so it's not really built towards effective communication or outcomes or anything like that. Um, but Tell you know, we, all, we, all, <laughs> we all started like that because we're all ambitious. We all want that drive and we all want to make that difference. So we work hard and we get to that point. Um, I, had, uh, I had some brief placements with uh, like rehab kind of specialists. Um, so for me, it was like, you know, I think this is a good way for me to, to make it facts right mm -hmm. um, i'm not gonna lie i also not like the the smartest kid right and back then <laughs> like i mean i got into physio school I'm, I'm, I'm smart but i'm not like super work ethic hard when it comes to like school work right so med school was completely out of the option for me even though i'm brown and it's kind of like looking at the stars you gotta be a doctor, <laughs> well now right? the secret's like, out <laughs> <laughs> like you gotta be a doctor right? that was how i was you have to be a doctor an engineer right or oh. or, or you're cut off right but i love no, it no, I, I think for me it was like just one of those things where i'm like i, I want to make an impact the way i can um so i did my health side degree um i actually took a something that most people don't know about these i actually did go to school right away after after my undergrad um i i volunteered in south asia i what? Worked, i worked in customer service for a bit um, and then I just, you know, I took my time to figure it out. And then I realized, you know, I'm going to go back, back to school. Um, I applied for all the rehab programs and I got into physio and that was the one I wanted to do. So I finished physio school, became, became a, a physio and I, I worked. Um, and you know, there's something in you as you kind of advance in life, as you get older, you just find who you really are. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, yeah, I, I'm, I'm myself, I'm a, I have a physiotherapist background. I have physical therapist education, but I'm also Raj. I'm just, I'm just a guy who I, I can I swear? Yes. Can yes. You can <laughs> <laughs> oh I my just, gosh. It's so funny. Cause everyone asks, they're just like, all right. Cause like, I don't, I don't like, I don't okay, swear, I don't. but like, it's so funny because everyone's just like, can I, can I just like throw an <laughs> F-bomb really well, quick? Me, swearing, yes. Swearing is not a, it's not a bad thing. It's just, it's just to emphasize words, right? Like, yes. I get just, it I just, out. I'm, I'm Absolutely. a bit of a, I'm, I, you know, I, I'm a bit of a shit disturber, <laughs> right? Like, like I just like to do things my way. And, and I really felt like I needed, like, I just can't be held into my box. Okay. And that's yes. who I am as a person. That's who I am. And maybe that's a bit of my artistic background, creative background, but like, I just can't be held in my box. So, you know, you work it, it, and you, kind of go through the ranks a little bit and then you get you know you get you you get a, a day in your life where you're like i need to go and create something because it, mm -hmm. it's, it's that that's something in me i, I can do all this better right yes. i'm not gonna lie like you like you know like most of us when we're young in our 20s um we have that ambitious drive we're a little bit more shit disturbing i do you know tell anybody who's young and 
who has that kind of passion in them right now, go do it. If you feel like you can do something different, go do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, the best thing, the worst thing you can do is not try, right? So go try. Thank you. Right. Right? Like go try it. Right. Uh, Because once you get later in life and you have family and stuff like that, it's much harder for you to take those risks because you, you do want to look after them differently. And sometimes, you know, stability has to come in, but you know, I took those risks and, um, that led me to opening my own clinic or, or I've met a, you know, my business partner, someone I've worked with before. We, we decided, you know, let's, let's, let's do a clinic that, that kind of, it's a bit more of our way, but it's like, we want to have good outcomes. We want to have good care. We want to modernize it a little bit, right? We don't want to be like boring mm-hmm. healthcare with like pink <laughs> or like, it's just it's the boring boring. people. We, yeah. Yeah. We wanted to kind of make it a little bit cool, a little bit, you know, just, just add a little bit of jazz to it. Right. So mm-hmm. two young guys, we opened a clinic right downtown, you know, the, the, the vibe was different. It was hip hop music every day. I'm, you know, <laughs> the speakers, our, cra- our clientele was gone. <laughs> You, know, you have to give them a visual, work. Raj. You got to give them oh, a visual. Yeah. Like you, <laughs> like if you guys don't know Raj, like yeah. the first, like when I met him in Israel, like we did major games together and it was crazy because this guy, we decided to go off on our own one Saturday when we had one day off and this guy pulled up in like a Tupac t-shirt <laughs> in Israel. <laughs> it was just, actually, it was, oh, no, it was, it was a biggie. biggie. It was a biggie, it was biggie. t-shirt. Yeah. That's right. It was biggie. It and was, I went, we, we went to visit like the Wailing Wall. With my like, the only t-shirt I had left. Oh my God. It was, it was such an epic moment. Like, so yes, uh, hip hop and all that stuff is uh, definitely uh, in my, your blood. Much respect to Israel. Beautiful country, beautiful people. We love it. It was such an amazing history there. Oh, um, I want to go back next year. Yeah. Who knows? Um, but yeah, we just, we just wanted to bring it like, like a, our vibe. We didn't want it to be so stuffy white coat. Like that was just kind of boring. Yeah. And maybe that's just who I was, right? I, was, I just, I didn't want to follow that either. And we're seeing that now, right? We're seeing the movements now with the systemic racism and all that stuff. It's, it's it's good to push the borders. It's good to push the barriers a little bit. It's good to make change, right? Uh, we yep. did it our way. We just wanted to create something. We created it. And that's how we started. We just created our own brand. Um, mm-hmm. We had a fun way of delivering healthcare, but we were so focused on like just having a great experience. Like we wanted our clients to have an awesome experience. Like come into physio. We want to make physio fun. We want to make it worthwhile, right? Uh, we didn't want to mm-hmm. make it very insurance driven. We didn't want to make it like very like, you know, you only have $500 worth of insurance. We wanted to make it like you come in, you still get your good quality healthcare, but you're having a good time and you value it. And you're like, I don't mind mm-hmm. paying 80 bucks for this. This is great. Mm-hmm. Whether I have insurance or not, I don't mind it. Cause this is what I, this is what I want to pay for. I want to, this is a great way to spend 30 minutes of my day, three times a week or twice a week. Right? Well, it's That's all really about atmosphere, push, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So we really brought, and, and I'm able to talk about that now in retrospect, cause I've been able to kind of see what worked for us. But when we started, it was just, let's just have fun. I'm not going to lie. There wasn't a lot of science to it. It's, let's just have fun. Let's just do what we got to do. That's, that, that's, what it is. that's what a lot of it is, right? Yeah. And then as you get older and you want to start scaling and systematizing things, then you like, what is it that made us successful? Then you start looking at it, right? We were having fun, mm-hmm. but really it was, it was us having fun, but our clients having a great experience. And that's yeah. what you want to try to scale. You want to try to scale. How do we scale that experience? Because it can't, oh, be, yeah. me. It can't be me or my business partner, Matt, anymore. We have more staff. We have a larger team. How do we make sure that other clients feel that same energy that our clients did? And part of that is, is kind of figuring out what was the, you know, what was that, that selling proposition to our, to our clients that made them want to keep coming back. Mm -hmm. Um, So to be honest, my story, it's not like, it's not crazy revolutionary, right? It's just a guy that wanted to go out and do something on his own. Um, You know, um, someone who just didn't want to follow the rules a little bit, didn't want to be in the box of healthcare. And I'm not like a crazy disturber. You know, there's a lot of people out there doing much bigger movements than I have, but I did it in my way, in my own world. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. And and, um, I I feel proud of what I've accomplished and I'm happy to be able to keep continuing doing what I want to do. And I think it's the best job in the world. Yeah. Well, you guys have been doing it, what, for nine years now? Is it nine? Yeah, I opened a clinic. uh, So we started the process in like 2010, but we actually opened it in 2011. So yeah, we've been, we've been running a business. Uh, We opened a clinic in 2011, but I'd say now we have like a brand and a business. Um, So yeah, we're proud of of what we built. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's just, and that's the biggest thing that I, I love having these conversations about because um, my last podcast, we were talking about how, you know, they started like, when massage therapists don't have like CEUs anymore, we have like a whole different system. So for continuing education, they just launched a huge platform of uh, education and how they can 
really help people focus on what they want to actually do courses on. So it's, it's wicked because sometimes things that happen in life, um, you know, with you taking that break before going into like further schooling, it's like, it gives you that kind of window to say, okay, like, what is it that I really want to do? You know? And, and funny enough, like you and I met, which was awesome. And then you got into sports. So what is like, what is a sports physiotherapist? Like, what does that entail for you? Yeah. So when it's specifically a sports physiotherapist, there is like postgraduate education to be a physiotherapist uh, to be certified in like your sports certificate and your sports diploma as well. Um, and it was something that I was interested in. And I, I'm not going to lie. Part of part of getting those designations was to help build my brand, right? Um, to help build <laughs> yep. My network, right? Um, I, I totally think I think I think if you're going to do something, you have to make sure there's an outcome that you're mm-hmm. working towards, right? And uh, yeah, I wanted to obviously build my skill set, but a lot of it is I know it's a marketable skill set, right? When people are looking on a website and, and, you know, this is where I've learned from my customer service world is when people look at a website and say physiotherapist or sports physiotherapist. And if I feel like I'm an athlete, who am I going to see? I'm going to see the sports physiotherapist. Yes. Right? So, yes. so part of, part of that was to help build my brand and build a brand of myself and my company and help, you know, get, uh, you know, help lineate myself as kind of like a, a, an expert in that field. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's kind of why I did. I obviously I enjoy sports and I enjoy working. In, in that world and part of it also was for me like to be able to get into major events and things like that help build my network and big time my network I build my brand right so it wasn't just about me it was about my brand and my vision all along every decision I made um since I started my company was about how I can use this to elevate my brand and my vision right mm, so mm. people in healthcare I can get more credentials under under my name I can meet people like yourself who can help then later on elevate like every time we meet and we connect we always people always come back to us somehow we connect again and then we get yes. each other somehow right we can use each other's platforms right so this is this is the why I, I got into that kind of practice but um you have to do some postgraduate education um to become a sports sports physiotherapist and what that allows you to do that allows you to practice um at like major games uh so mm. at the Maccabi games I've been to the Canada games before you get selected as part of the team to represent you know whether it's your country or a certain team travel with them or, or be stationed at a game. So we were working at Toronto, I've done work at Toronto 2015 as well. Oh um, yeah, you did that too? Yeah, yeah. Oh and sweet, what, what sports well. did you do? Uh, so Which we covered, uh, so I was the lead medical practitioner for, um, so I was, the, I was the, the lead therapist for roller uh, roller speed skating, which is awesome. <laughs> yes. uh, so it's, it's speed skating on rollerblades, which is intense. It's a huge sport in South America. Um, and, um, you know, quite a, quite a fun sport to watch. I mean, just imagine speed skating on rollerblades Damn. On, on an asphalt track. So that was fun. They did it out in UFT Scarborough. Uh, no, yeah. that would a hundred percent be intense to watch. Right, of course, right? <laughs> yeah. Gold chains and everything. Right? But you go out to Scarborough, bro. <laughs> Seriously, that's, that's where you cliche <laughs> yeah. fit, you know? I know. Oh my cliche, God. I was joking. Um, but, um, <laughs> no, part of it was, so, you know, but a lot of those events, like I wanted to do those events because it was just something that I thought was a cool way to kind of not just work in the clinic, but just on the ground working with athletes but also help promote myself and promote my network i'm not gonna lie like i said you know you've seen me here i you have to promote yourself you don't be shy mm-hmm. if you're an entrepreneur mm-hmm. you need to get out there and and i'm not you know i used to go to all these events and i'm like why don't you guys promote yourselves you know you just sitting here and Thank learning you. books and, and, and giving out you know and, and doing all this treatment you know like as most of us know um you know all of our sport therapists the sport rmts the sport cars we don't get paid to go to these events right and we get paid mm-hmm. a very little bit. We get some lunch here and there, but it's like, it's not, it's not, we're missing out a full day of work and we're coming to these events. So why can't I use these platforms to help promote myself? Right. Yes. So I want to be able to meet athletes. I want, and, and maybe that's not what the, the elite people or the people at the top think that's cool, but I'm down for taking photos with athletes and putting it on my social media. I'm down with that. I think that's fine. Right. I think well, I think it's, now, you know, it's not even like, um, yeah. like it's great for promotions and stuff like that, yeah. but even for them, like to, to yeah. be proud of who their, their therapist exactly. is, you know, exactly. like and they felt why better not? and they got something in return. They got something of high value in return. Mm-hmm. You know, um, we show up to all these events and there's Tim Hortons, McDonald's, Coca-Cola, everybody's out there and I can't promote myself and I'm giving you mm-hmm. my six years worth of education. You know, oh, to yeah. Free. yeah, I want the athlete to get better, but I should also make sure I'm taking time out of my day, out of my family to come out there and spend time with you guys, right? That's a whole yep. other, that's a whole other beef, but um, yeah, <laughs> but it's I think true, you know, though. I'm, I'm super it's so into this true. stuff, yeah. So being a sports physio essentially means, you know, within our world of physio, we kind of are the physiotherapists that get selected to go to these events, uh, whether locally or internationally. So um, it's been really awesome. I think it's been awesome for me as well, because I have a, I have a, 
sustainable running business. Um, I've, I've had the privilege, I've had the privilege to be able to step away from a business to go to these games um, mm-hmm. without having to worry about losing an income and stuff like that. I don't, I don't think it's possible for everybody, um, but I've been able to go to these games. I've been able to expand my network. I've been able, I've given opportunity to travel to places like Israel and, um, you know, Alberta and stuff like that, where I've been able to, you know, see new people and work with new athletes. I've learned about so many different sports uh, mm-hmm. and it's really built my clinical skill set. Uh, but most most importantly, it's helped build my network um, of, of physicians, massage therapists, chiropractors. I've been able to expand my my network of, of colleagues, which is super helpful in in, yeah. a, in kind of that world of sports, right? So that's what being a sports physio is. But I would always number one, if people ask me, Raj, what do you do? I'll say I'm an entrepreneur. First. Yes, because that and is that's the I best do, word. Right? I'm, I'm an entrepreneur <laughs> who happens to be a sports physiotherapist. I'm an entrepreneur who happens to be a dad. I'm an entrepreneur who happens to be a husband. Like, I'm an entrepreneur. That that mentality, that mindset, is a united. Yes. No matter what, like that. I've always been an entrepreneur. Actually, I've never thought about it. I've always been an entrepreneur from when I was a high school kid to, to now. It's just you know, now there's a name for it. It's true, and like I, I love that you said that because you know the podcast that I did, the first podcast for this um, season was we literally talked about that. Is the fact that when you when someone asks you like you know who is Raj, you know like who is he, you don't you don't. Some people say, oh, he's a sports physiotherapist. But for yourself, you're just like, no, I'm an entrepreneur Mm -hmm. who has excelled (laughs) in what I want to do. And, you know, this is just the beginning of my platforms of the people that I'm going to meet at these games or even like, like I've had clients come in and it's amazing what they even introduced me to. It's like, oh, you know what? Like you would have a good connection with this yoga instructor who, you know, works with sports or, so it's, it's cool because my biggest philosophy is being a sponge. So whether you're at major games, whether you're on a podcast, whether you're at a webinar and you're having conversations with people about how to further yourself as well as how to build connections, just be a sponge. Like it's the biggest, best pro, you know, there's two types of growth. There's, there's that linear growth where I have to do this, then to do this, then to do this, then to do this. And then there's just that, like, there's the way forests grow, right. Mm -hmm. Where, 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 you know, we can go out and plant trees in a line and trees are growing a line. But if we just look at nature, the way nature grows, nature just grows. Right. Yes. A tree goes here, then a tree goes here, then a tree goes here, then a tree goes here, the plants grow here, little things grow here. And I think, I believe that's how growth should be. It's organic. Mm-hmm. You meet somebody and that helps. Sometimes you meet somebody and that's it. That's that one interaction. But sometimes you meet somebody else and it's like, you know, two years later, you're doing a podcast with them, right? Yeah. <laughs> or, or, or a year later, you're getting an Instagram message like, hey, you treated so-and-so and I'd like to come in and treat you, right? It's just yes. organic. We just got to, you know, so much of, you know, I would say any of those future entrepreneurs out there is just expand your network and be a sponge, be willing to learn. Don't, sometimes, mm-hmm. you know, it's not always just going out there trying to sell. That's not your purpose. Your purpose is not trying to sell. Your purpose is to meet and grow. Yes. Right? And then it'll come yes. back to you, right? Your purpose is to meet and grow because you can't sell to everybody because not everybody falls for it. Not everybody wants it, but they, they, mm-hmm. could, they, can, they can feel your vision. Like before we even sat on this, we, we went, we worked in Israel and, and we kind of chilled on the beach and we were on a trip together. And then we, we met up for drinks when we came back to Toronto and now we're meeting up again, like two years later and we're discussing this. this that's just what organic is. I mean, we, mm-hmm. never, like, we mm-hmm. never really wanted to purposely make sales to each other. We just kind of organically grew and we, exactly. we met each other. Right. And that's how it works. And I think that organic growth, kind of like the way a forest grows is like, is, is the mindset we want. It's kind of like a very random, like zigzaggy mindset, but that's, mm-hmm. that's the best way to, um, expand yeah i agree because like if you really look into the definition of entrepreneur there's no i like i believe there's no specific answer to what an entrepreneur description is because everyone is so different but that's the best part is when you start meeting people it's like okay so like you can see people have drive they have ambition they have the will to work insane hours just to get to where they need to be or you know like for people who can volunteer like you and I, like who can take time off and say, okay, I'm going to go for a week and work with Team Canada, or we're going to leave for a month and go work with Team Canada. You know, it's like some people can't do that. But what's great about entrepreneurs is if you look at that experience and say like, okay, for example, Israel, like if, if we were to work that, what can that further with my resume and get more connections? Or when those athletes come back, 
they can come to me. You know what I mean? Exactly. So it's it's yeah. a win win regardless exactly. if it's volunteer or paid, right? Like it's yeah. a connection. We don't, we don't seek. I think I think the thing with entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs don't seek like a monetary return. It's like mm -hmm. an opportunity, right? Yeah. So they always go out for things and see what what is the opportunity of this, right? Mm -hmm. If I'm going to go to an event, I can meet fifty people. I can have I have I can have connection with so many people, then I think that's going to be a good opportunity versus another event which I might not. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's how we have to start scaling our, our decisions, especially as you start getting older, um, depending on your personal life, if you have a family, it's like I do, I have to be much, much more, you know, calculative about what opportunities I seek and what events I want to go to and what kind of things I want to take. So mm -hmm. um, I have to, I have to decide like, you know, when I, when I look at these things, is this where I want to spend my time or, you know, is it here? And then I'll decide based on that. But and that, that never leaves you because, you mm -hmm. know, the best part of being an opportunity is, is like your high level of risk, right? Like, you might be like, I'm going to leave to go to Israel for three weeks and I'm, I'm not going to make much money because I'm, pay I'm paying usually to go. Um, yeah. I'm giving up certain time the donation. I'm giving up, <laughs> I'm giving up uh, my, my practice um, and I might not get anything out of it. Right. Mm -hmm. I have to accept that, but I'm also going to work to make sure I, I have made sure that when I come back from that trip, I'm put in all my effort to get something out of it, which is why making mm -hmm. connections is so important, but it's organic connections. Just, just being people and, and yes. just being good people. Right. And it, yes. it comes back to you. Right? Yeah. Humble being humble is, is very important. Right. <laughs> and yeah. I think, it is. I think connecting with people, right? it is. Yeah. yeah. But I think there's also like, like I've had conversations with, with all the entrepreneurs on season one and we we're having conversations that with, with major games or even just like one specific sports team you work with, you know, there's a time and place for different therapies. And I think that's also something that I value when you have someone who respects that and says, okay, like you can do the taping, you know, you can do the therapy and then someone else can do the joint mobs. And it's like an equal distribution versus being the hierarchy system. And I think that's important to, to also get into like exactly you know but yeah and i think yeah. a lot of this is even when we treat like for myself even when i treat my clients and i still see people about 15 hours a week it's really just getting to know people like i just i just live my energy just comes off of meeting people and learning about people and understanding people because that's how we grow as individuals people are constantly mm -hmm. different, right like the clients i used to see 14 years ago when i got into practice very different from my athletic clients very different from my clients like, you know and very different from and just learning and meeting these people and just having that like you know that that want i, I want to learn from you because mm -hmm. you're my client i want to learn from you and then people want to come back in and they want to see you because they're contributing to you as well right? mm -hmm. and that's i think that is kind of a, a, a big recipe for success is just being able you know at least in our world in healthcare it's so people driven people mm -hmm. live off that energy if you try to make every interaction transactional like okay, let's do these joint modes. Let's give you these exercises. Let's do these <laughs> weeks. You're not yes. in two weeks, right? Yes. You come in, you get to, you do joint modes while you're having fun. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. You talk and about, that's what you, you talk have about, to have. You talk about the ball game and you teach exercises, you know, and they're doing their exercise while you talk about the ball game, right? Mm -hmm. You're connecting with them, right? That, and then they're like, oh, I had so much fun. I'll come back in, you know? And, and then, you know, like that's, that's how I feel. I've grown a practice and that's how, that's who I look for in my practitioners people that mm -hmm. are energetic, people that are, you know, that just can connect with people. And that's the largest part of any practitioner, I think, is to is to look at like what makes every practitioner, regardless, you're an RMT, I'm a physio, we have chiros, we have physicians, mm -hmm. we have naturopaths, you know, you look at the, the the common denominator between everybody who has a thriving practice, and it's that they're so people oriented and they create value for their clients. Yeah. Right? And, and yep. the, last, the last destination doesn't really matter. Right. And, mm -hmm. and, and we have learned that too. Right. Like when we started our practice it was like, we don't have to have all these designations and be, be super smart on paper. We just need to be like really good at people. You just have to be approachable. I think that's yeah. the biggest thing. Like I find that um, clients at times, they, I agree, they educate you on stuff. And when you start feeling around and you say like, what does that feel like? And it's almost improving your confidence with your palpations, your treatments, your taping. And, and then when you build that, then it just yeah. starts growing your practice even stronger. Right. Exactly. exactly. Yeah. It's, it's exactly. a huge pro. <laughs> it's, yeah. hundred percent. And, and that that's front to back too, right? Like uh, a team is not just the, the person in the room, but like everybody that's the people that the the clients see when they walk in the client reps your front desk your patient coordinators whatever you want to call them they have to have that energy your brand has to have that energy uh your clinicians have to have that entire 
process for the client has to always have that high energy, high value to that patient. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, and I think a team is the most important and right now more than ever, like diversity in in the business is, is Mm -hmm. crucial because, you know, it's important to educate people and and even just learn yourself. Right. So like, you know, I love if you guys look on his website, like there's so much diversity within your business, which is beautiful. So, you know, how, how'd you go about that? Like finding the right therapist, what they believe in all that kind of stuff. Um, I I think to be honest, like it's kind of organic, Mm -hmm. Um, partly obviously because, you know, I'm a person of color. My business partner is also, you know, he's, he's half South Asian as well. Uh, we both grew up in like urban parts of Toronto. So it's natural to us. Mm-hmm. Right? It's just natural to us. And that's actually something I thought that was lacking in the industry. Uh, mm-hmm. was that little bit of that urban feel, right? I felt it was kind of too, you know, I, if I, I hope not to offend people, I almost felt it was too white. Right? It's too cookie cut. It's very it's cookie, cookie cut. cut. It's in too certain, the same. It's too yeah. the books, right? Um, mm-hmm. It's too like built on the foundations of these certain things, right? Mm-hmm. Which can be to some people a bit of a privileged thing, right? Like, we follow the books, we follow the rules, and we get to do it. We practice by the rules, we practice by the college we practices, so we don't disrupt, we don't change, and everything's good, right? Mm-hmm. Um, that works until you have people that myself who have benefited from actually not following the rules, right? People that have benefited from taking risks, people that have benefited from, you know, I'm an immigrant, right? Like t- that, that mm-hmm. alone itself is a risk. Right? We benefited from taking a big risk. Uh, we benefited from cutting corners a little bit. We benefit that that's how we have to survive a little bit, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so why should that change? Because I'm a healthcare provider. Right? Yes. Thank you. Thank change? you. Yeah, I, have, I have some college <laughs> regulations, but like, I, I, I should be able to push the buttons a little bit. Right. Mm-hmm. And, and mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and if you actually go out seeking with, if you have that kind of mentality and you go look for that mentality, you end up looking at your team and like, Oh wow, look, huh. Most of our team isn't actually white. Yeah. Right. Because yeah. That mentality is strives through people who are brought up like that. They have urban mentality that we have. Oh yeah. And this, oh, is, and this is no offense to white people or anything. I'm not saying that it's <laughs> killer or whatever. I'm just saying there's a mentality, right? Um, mm-hmm. And then there's talent and, and, you know, we look for uniqueness. We look for people that can connect with people. We look for skills that are people skills mm-hmm. and that's what we look for. Right. Um, and when we look for that, you actually end up getting a diverse team. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, if I'm in downtown Toronto, I need people that speak a variety of languages. So when I'm in my interviews, I don't just look for what your designation is or what course you're taking. I do look for, you know, do you have, a, you know, do you speak a certain language? Mm-hmm. Right? Uh, because we know that can be beneficial, right? We just look for people a little bit different, uh, people that can connect. And then you end up having, then you end up looking at team like oh, that. So with all the movement that's happening right now, right now, it's like, it's not about like, don't go actively trying to hire people that look different. It's just change the mindset of who <laughs> yes. you hire. Right? It's true. Because if, if your mindset is, is, fix and it's in a closed box you just end up hiring people of different color that still have the same mindset that's not what we're mm-hmm. looking for mm-hmm. right we're looking for people with open mindset people who just want to grow people that want it's about a mindset and then when you look at a team you'll actually have a pretty and, and we have like people of all ethnic backgrounds people of all different you know um, from all, all parts of all, all, all walks of life um, but it's well mm-hmm. represented because it's an open mindset well and i think that's the thing like when when you say the word diversity it's there's so many um, definitions for it, but diversity in skill sets and diversity in race. But I think exactly. the, the most beautiful thing is, is that there's so much that can be brought to the table. Like, and yeah. I think that's what people are so naive to. It's just like, yeah. if you just open your eyes and understand what is really out there. And it, yeah. I agree with the languages. Like, I mean, you know, like when I worked in Brampton, it was really hard because there were certain yeah. languages that I had no idea about. Yeah. And I wish that I, I had someone to even just help me translate, you know, and mm-hmm. it is, it is tough. So it's, it's great to yeah. have it. And I mean, if, if there is any physiotherapist or massage therapist out there, mm-hmm. Raj is looking for one. So <laughs> always looking, <laughs> message, always looking. message right. and let them know. Us, it's like, I've, I've met people, you know, I've met people that look like me, but are completely closed mindset. And it's like, mm-hmm. it's work for me, right? Cause yeah. I want somebody who wants to grow, who wants to expand, who wants to take big risks. Right. Mm-hmm. So to me, it's not about like finding somebody that, you know, I don't actively look for that. I just actively look for growth opportunity, you know, somebody yeah. who's progressive, somebody who's willing to grow, like somebody who's not afraid to, you know, see their, see their, you know, company logo go black and brown or somebody who's mm-hmm. not afraid to see the company logo go with the pride colors. Right. Somebody mm-hmm. who can like be proud of those kind of things is what we look for. Right. Uh, Cause we do that. Right. And, and we're proud of that. And, and that's what we look for. And when you look for that, 
then you find the right people just kind of come organically. Mm -hmm. But that's when you also speak to your clientele, right? It's not even just about like the therapists who work at your place. Like when you have a comfortable environment for all people, I think it's wonderful because when they walk in and they see your logo, you know, with pride colors, for example, like in some areas, unfortunately, that's still very much a problem, you know, and I think that's, it's great to have an open door concept with that, because, you know, then they feel more comfortable, and then they actually enjoy their time. And then, you know, regardless of the yeah. referrals come or not, they are someone who will probably come back because of the situation, right? Absolutely. 100%. Yeah. So when you have, um, now that you have like three businesses, uh, you know, have you had any like, really really high peaks or like have you experienced like some serious plateaus because i feel like every entrepreneur has quite some journeys with those yeah yeah i mean hey we're um we're coming out of covid right uh, COVID <laughs> that's a, pretty, it's like, a plateau like, in itself it was a pretty yes. shitty time mm -hmm. um oh of course we've had some peaks like the peak was when we when we like realized that we could actually scale the business um, mm -hmm. and opening like like Opening the business is always a good feeling. It's like having a baby. It's, it's a great feeling yeah. to have a baby, right? Um, and then running the business is that plateau, right? It's when the baby <laughs> is crying all night or, or the baby's not eating and they're not getting any sleep, right? That's the plateau. Mm -hmm. You feel like a plateau, but you know, you know that, you know, you know that there's going to be a reward at the end. You just got to work towards it. So it's always a plateau. Yes. You have to understand that, right? Yeah. Um, there's going to be, your business is going to always be great. Right. We had a leak yesterday in one of our clients and we just we had to close off like two of the rooms, right? Mm. Um, you know, like like and then we had COVID and we had to close the clinic. So yeah, this shit always happens. You have to expect that. Right? Yeah. It's part of life. It's, it's it's um I actually think being a parent is a great is a great like, <laughs> stepping stone to become an entrepreneur or vice versa because uh it's it's the same thing, right? Like like kids babies are great and then they become little shit disturbers and then they love you and mm -hmm. don't love you and then they're like, you know it's the same it's the same process right <laughs> it's, like all, it's all a wave things. it's all about it's the all wave, wave. Exactly. Yes. there's high points and low points so yeah you know i think when we're able to scale our business and we open every time we open a clinic it feels great every time i hire somebody it feels great like it's mm -hmm. so refreshing to bring somebody on it's such a proud moment for ourselves to bring on a team member a new team member and train them right mm -hmm. every time our team member a new team member hits their targets it's a peak Right. And then mm. we have lows, you know, when, when, uh, you know, you'll have team members, like, I don't feel valued here, you know, or, or somebody that says, you know, I'm not getting along with this. And this it's going to happen. It's organic as your company grows. It's going to be like that. Right. There's going to mm -hmm. be those downturns. It's going to be COVID from a financial standpoint in which you have to close your doors and you, you know, you need to figure out funds. It's gonna be, how the hell am I going to keep my business open? Is it going to be open? Right? Yep. And there's going to be stuff like, you know, like people just feel like, I don't think we're working together. From a client perspective, right? Clients, this mm -hmm. is not working from, or you, you get a bad review, right? We, you know, at one point I was trying to avoid bad reviews, but it can't happen. As you grow, shit's going to happen. So you yes. get a bad review and that's, that's going to be a shitty day, right? Mm -hmm. But then you go back and you're like, I was a 300 five-star review. So that's good, right? You just got to keep <laughs> yes. working on your vision. So there's always going to be like, I can't say there's one peak or there's one like low point. There's always waves. And so much of it also dipped into my personal life. You know, what goes mm -hmm. on at home affects what goes on at work. It's, it's so hard to separate those two, but it, you know, I think what the take home message is just expect, like, there's going to be waves, right? But yes. whenever there's a downside, there's always going to be a good side of it, you know? And, and you know what, like this August, Lindsay, this is the best August, August, 2020 is the best August we've had in 10 years. What? Okay, for our That's business. crazy. Um, That's amazing. Because it, but the reason why it's the best is because we were closed for three months. Right. Yeah. But I took it too. as a win. Right. I took it as a win. Right. I kept telling them it's the best August we've ever had. Right. Yeah. We were close. It was the worst March we had. Yes. But it was yes. the best August we had. Right. You got to be like was, that. Right. March it was, was the best tough. August. You know what? Live off that August and go into September. We're hiring mm -hmm. now for September, October. Just keep going off of it. Right. Jeez. We lost a few members. We lost a few staff members because of COVID. They wanted to make a personal life decision changes. But we're hiring some more. You just mm -hmm. got to keep going at it. It just can't. You can't let that define you. You got to keep going. You gotta yes. keep pushing and growing, right? Um, you know, and then that's that's part of how how we grow, and that's part of that mindset. And it's about having mm -hmm. team members who also want that mindset. And who mm -hmm. also feel like, yeah, it was shitty, it wasn't so good, we were on wage sub, you know, we were on serve, we were on this, but now you're back, you're working, your practice is thriving again. That means you're yep. doing a great job. That means you're doing yep. a great job. That means we're a service that people want to come back to see. And I think we've seen that in all of the rehab fields, right? Is that people want to come back to see us. Um, and, and people are coming back, you know, and trusting our businesses. So mm -hmm. that's more and sometimes like, 
Uh, like, I think, I think COVID was actually like, I, I've been saying, I, I actually loved COVID because it was the first <laughs> time that like I ever took that much time, like not purposely, oh, but sorry. time off. And I was able to like re-educate myself, realign myself to my own goals. And, you know, for some of our clients realize how much of an effect our health like care professionals really have for them. And, you know, the, the benefits of what therapy can do for people. And, um, I think it's also really important because, you know, you think about the athletes that we work with, right? Like most of them potentially could be in a bubble right now, like, um, you know, in the States or wherever. And, um, it's, it's an interesting time because I mean, yeah. I am 99.9% positive. You know about the boycotting and yeah, how that's yeah, going. Yeah, and uh, yeah, yeah. we read about it today, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's definitely out there. So, you know, COVID yeah. and, and, yeah. you know, working with athletes and all that kind of stuff, it's, it's definitely a, a really cool wave to be on because yeah. there are going to be some really fun times and you're going to meet some yeah. really cool athletes. And then there's going to be low times where you're, not looking at it as a negative, but actually as a positive to grow more or produce more growth in your business, right? Exactly. Like, it's, it's it, perfect. You know what, like, it, it's funny, like COVID happened, like it's shitty that it happened, right? And like, mm-hmm. if you'd asked me like in January, like, do you want to close this up for three months if you had to, to reset everything? I would have said, hell no, I got to keep going, right? <laughs> no. We did more in three months. I mean, COVID was closed, but we did more in three months to kind of fix the problems in our business than we ever would have done in three years. Because we yes. had no choice. We had to. So what else are we going to do? We can't just sit here and sulk. Mm-hmm. We have to fix things. So you know, we got our bank loans. We did them. We kept working. Well, mm-hmm. our, our leadership team started communicating better, right? We started offering virtual care. Now we start. We found a way to implement virtual care into our um, into our direct care services. Uh, we started providing value via webinars. And webinars have become an awesome way to, to educate clients, right? Uh, we've just found ways to, to adapt and grow. And, and, you know, you always kind of look at COVID as like a learning experience, um, mm-hmm. a quarantine time. And, and we fixed our business. We were able to grow our business. We were able to grow ourselves, sorry, not grow our business, grow ourselves. And now we're going to use that kind of learning um, and everything we did during those few months that we were closed to help elevate us to the next bit. Mm-hmm. Right? Um, you know, like, like we have, like we, a lot, a, for example, a, a large issue with us was team meetings. We used to have a, a problem with the people meeting in the teams because shifts were here and there. Everyone had different shifts, right? That would All be hard, yes. Became a, <laughs> Zoom, became a, Zoom became a common thing. Now we have mm-hmm. be- the best attendance we have at meetings because everybody just comes in through Zoom, right? Mm. Tuesday, we do Zoom meetings as a team. So I can bring in the whole team. We even have town halls with all three clinics, right? We can have meetings with all three clinics because Zoom is just a common thing now. And it's something yes. that people accept and people have adapted to. So we can utilize those skills and utilize those tools in the new kind of future to our advantage to help make our business better, to help, mm-hmm. to help make effective communication, right? Yeah, um, so that's, yeah, just that's a big thing. Just, you always have to be able to just adapt and use these, these, these bad times to make good times. It's part of that mindset. Mm-hmm. It's part of that mindset. It's like, you look at every failure as an opportunity. Now. What can I get out of this? This has happened. I can't change it, but now what, what can I get out of it? What can I learn? What can I do? Exactly. Well, and that's the thing that I, I love because it's just like when you have conversations with people, they're either like sulking <laughs> or they're motivated. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like yeah. there's so many different types of um, personalities that come out through yeah. COVID. Right. And, and yeah. I think what's really cool is that when you see people on social media, you know, like yourself promoting the clinic saying like, Hey, we're doing virtual stuff. Like look at our swag. Like we got some pretty sick swag for sale. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, you know, taking that and just running with it and just say, you know what, this is what it is, you know, like just initially just going with it and saying, this is what we have to figure out. This is it's, our current it's, situation. Uh, it's that Kobe Bryant mama mentality, right? Like mm-hmm. you're allowed to be sad. You're allowed to sulk. You're allowed to cry. You have to, you have to, once you get it out, you go work. Yes. You work. Yes. And you make yourself better than you were. And that's that mentality. Right. And, uh, his words resonate so much more now because of everything that's happened. But it's like, it, it mm-hmm. really is a true thing. Like you are allowed to sulk. We are allowed to be sad and we should, um, but then we have to go ahead and make ourselves better. We have to work for it. And that is mm-hmm. what you have to do. You have to work. No matter what, you just have to work <laughs> to get better. It's you have, be to you have yes. to work. Yes. However you do it, you have to work. You meet people, you have to put in the time, you have to do the shit you don't want to do, but you have to work. Mm-hmm. And then you'll see the results at the end. You'll see it at the end. You can't, it's not like I'm going to work and get five, get money out of it. No. I got to work, 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 work. Yes. 
and then I'll yes. get money on yoga. I'll get something yep. on yoga, right? And that's what it is. It's not, it's not like this. It's not like every day. It's not like that transactional kind of relationship. We just mm-hmm. work because we believe in what we do, right? We get, we get yes. emotional, we get emotional satisfaction of doing the work. And then one day it's like, oh, mm-hmm. free clinics. That's amazing. But some, like, honestly, I had this moment last year because I, I was a representative for healthcare um, at Georgian College. And when we did this presentation and at the, I was showing, like, I was pretty, like, I had to tell people my story. And mm-hmm. I always, you know, at the very beginning of this, you said, it's hard to talk about yourself. And they wanted me to create this whole PowerPoint about my success and what I've been able to do so far and blah, blah, blah. And by the end, I was so emotional and I couldn't even like, I couldn't even handle it because I think for us as individuals, healthcare professionals, entrepreneurs, whichever way you want to view it, you sometimes don't sit back and say like, holy, like how have I done this much and this amount of time? And like, where is this drive coming from? Where, you know, like, and like, I got so emotional and you know, I'm looking because of course, like my mom came and my best friend came and, you know, she's crying and I'm crying. And, and it's just like, literally by the end, I was just like, yeah, just keep going up. I was just like, when you think that you're at the bottom, I was just like, yeah. just start looking up again, because there's yeah. so much opportunity out there, yeah. regardless of where you are in life. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So no, exactly. it's true. Exactly. I, oh, I love it. I love listening to growth stories. It's exciting. <laughs> If you have any shout outs you'd like to give or anything for our viewers, that would be amazing because, you know, you can be a mentor for so many. Trust me. Uh, you mean like, like shout out for myself? Like, or, or yeah, like, 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 tell us like where we can follow you and, oh, you know, uh, you can, you can, I'm trying to build up an Instagram, um, an Instagram following. Uh, um, so uh, you can follow me at, at at Raj Sapaya PT, so R A J S U P P I A H dot PT. Um, you know, I like to put out just sto- like my stories. It's no bullshit stuff, right? I, I just talk about my life and I talk about what's got me there, and then talk about different areas of success that like to find me. Um, it's not true. It's not too physio y or too healthcare y. It's more entrepreneurial, um, and that's the best way to reach me. You can also email me Raj at foundationphysio.com. I'm sure Lindsay will put all that stuff up uh, when he posts the podcast, but I'm happy to meet budding entrepreneurs, especially in healthcare. It's super passionate about that, a passion of mine. I think I think there's a lot of ways to make the industry better, uh, more accessible, um, change it for the better, to be really true, truly outcome and client focused. Um, I really feel like, you know, we got into it. Like the reason why a lot of us got into healthcare is to make a difference in our patients, but I don't really see it happening at the end, right? Um, so I really like we can truly be patient outcome focused. Um, and, and we, we believe that we can create value and, and create sustainable businesses in healthcare. Um, you know, we don't see too many brands in healthcare. We see a lot of brands in other industries, but I do believe that there can be a brand, a well-known brand recognized brand recognition can be something that, that patients and customers recognize as a great place to go for healthcare. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and so, you know, we're just trying to drive the industry forward in, in creating opportunities for people and, and changing the way healthcare is delivered uh, from an experiential standpoint. And that's, that's what we're about. And we're just doing it our way. Um, you know, <laughs> anyway, any way possible, <laughs> any way possible, but yeah, give us, give me a follow um, or follow everything you need. I think it's going to be a, a link, link below. Yes, definitely <laughs> the link below. Link below. Yes. <laughs> link below, link below. I like follow it. Me, I like it. Below. And uh, happy to chat. Thank you. Honestly, thank you so much. And I know everyone's going to value this because, you know, any entrepreneurial story is beautiful and you have quite a journey ahead of you. And I'm so excited. I hope that definitely like we can do the Israel thing again, if we can, let's um, do it. you know, let's just like, go. Let's... let's just me and you go off. Oh, I got, I got some Tupac shirts now. I think we have like an ice cube <laughs> one. I got one for like every day. We'll go to like every major like historic yes. site with just different hip hop teams imagine i feel like they would still let us in because they're just like we oh. need tourism let's do it they're they cool people it. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. They love it. We'll do, oh we'll he has go, tupac we'll go, once, we'll go once 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 travels opened up we'll go oh my god i know right i mean yeah. thank god we're not living in the states i have to say yeah. if i could pick anywhere not to live right now it, it's it's definitely <laughs> well, a tough no, place sure. so yeah sure. let's catch up great. all right dude. awesome being here i'm super super happy to have chatted i think it's so much fun so yes thank you so much i appreciate it <laughs> all the best thank you, thank you.